Hey there, folks. So, forgive the uh, unusual desk surface. I uh, was cleaning the mat. It's particularly gross. It's still wet, but I want to do a video anyway. So, here we are. Anyway, I want to go ahead and talk about one of the mods that I've kind of been working on off and on for like the last few years. Um, but first, I guess a little bit of backstory. So, more often than not, people buy a Game Boy. You know, you, you buy these cheap lots of them. They don't work. Uh, one problem is the power LED will flicker. Uh, sometimes the console itself will just reset if you so much as tap the uh, power switch like it just did here. Um, that sort of stuff. And flip it on and now I see my power LED is green again. I replaced the green LED with the white one in this console. But yeah, it's it's a common problem with Game Boys, and the fix is, for the most part, really just to pull it apart, open up the Switch, clean out the Switch, and then throw it back together, and it's good. Um, but that's not really a permanent fix. That's more of a uh, band-aid solution that I will have to keep redoing every few years, um, depending on how often you use the Game Boy. As, as the metals, the materials get older and wear down more and more, you'll have to do that more frequently. The fix becomes a little bit less effective. So I've been I've been thinking about ways to try and mitigate this issue within Game Boys. Now, starting with the Nintendo DS, other handhelds, phones even, uh, they don't use a hardware switch to do the latching and turn the console or the, the hardware on anymore. They use electronic switches. Um, and so I started looking into that. What is What is a good way to do that? And that's when I stumbled across this part. Now, I can't go into too much detail about how it works because, um, quite frankly, it's, I, I don't understand it fully well enough myself, but I had a look at the specs on this chip, and for what you get and the price you pay, it's, it's absurd. It's unheard of. Um, I tried finding other chips with the same features, even in the same voltage range in a different package, and I couldn't find anything. The single only downside I found with these things, they're like seven cents a pop too, they're stupid cheap, uh, is that the only way to get them is in a small, small four pin BGA package, which makes using them a little bit difficult. That's the chip right there. Uh, <laughs> So, I mean, the, you, you basically need a PCB. You can't dead bug to that thing. It's not happening. Don't even bother trying. Um, I made breakout boards for these things. So I made little itty bitty PCB. I actually had to size this thing up several times just to get it past the minim minimum size requirements. And all it is, it's a breakout for that chip. Uh, so that I don't have to try dead bug soldering to it, which I did try. It's just a little bit too small. Uh, but anyway, I don't think that actually soldering these things is that difficult. Uh, it's certainly an unusual challenge, but not too... Uh, oopsie doo. Just throwing stuff everywhere. It's an unusual challenge for sure, but it's not... I didn't find it too difficult. I've already done a couple of these things. Plug this thing in, let it heat up. Um, I did one, I threw it in this console. This is that uh, Funny Playing ITA video that I uploaded recently. I kept saying, hey, we've got an extra mod in here. Don't worry about it, I'll address that later. And well, now is later. Uh, but I am going to use my hot plate for this. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit because I intend on uh, using my microscope here. Um, you'll have to you'll have to forgive some of the weird framing I'm gonna end up doing here but I gotta work with what I got you know. I suppose, let me start recording. How do I record on this thing? 
Is that recording? <gasps> it's not recording because the battery just died. One moment. I was even thinking to myself, man, I should charge this Jesus thing before I do this video. And yet here we are. Let me go ahead and start the recording. Shows it's recording. Put my hot plate under there. Uh, do we need any light? Let's add some light. Why not? All right. So hot plate is up to temp, but let us take a look at the chip again. Oop. And my uh, flailing here, I knocked it over. You can see it's marked W76, or maybe you can't see that. Let me dump that thing out. Get some tweezers. Actually bought new tweezers. These tweezers specifically to deal with these chips. Figured it'd be a pain in the butt otherwise. But you see here, if I can uh, hold that steady and focus. Yeah, W76, but there's also that dot all the way in the lower right corner of the uh, chip. That's important because the orientation matters. Problem is these things are just so difficult. They're so small. You can't see anything. Um, but we're going to try. I've got both flex PCBs that are paper thin there. And I've got uh, regular printed circuit boards that we can try out. Spoiler alert. Like I said, I have already done these. I'm already confident in the circuit, as uh, simple as it is. Let's see if we can do two. I'm just going to flux up two of these boards just a little bit. try it out I guess I am going to get I'm gonna try and get things lined up before I even start putting the board on the grill here hmm I can barely see it never mind I don't think it matters just drop that on there and then let me find the chip so you can see in the microscope, the dot is on the top right, and the chip I have in my tweezers here is on the bottom left. So one of these two things needs to do 180. I'm going to spin the board around because that seems like a lot easier. Alright, so now the dot is in the bottom left. Position that. And drop the chip on. Ooh. There we go. Had that a little bit off. Hopefully it's fine. I'm gonna let that cook for just a second there. Let some of that extra flux flash off. Doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Fairly certain that's soldered down, by the way. The chip kind of jumped into position. Give it a little nudge. And yeah, you can see how it keeps going back, so I bet that's fine. I'm going to pull that off. And let's try again. It's the next board. Set that down. And let me get one of these chips here. And we got the dot in the top right again. And the chip has the dot in the top left, so we need to rotate the board. Like that. Uh-oh, I bet it moved. 
Now it's all covered in flux and I can't read it. Yep. Let's get a swab. I hope for the best. That is the worst part about these chips. If you drop it in the flux, or if you drop it at all, all right. I think I see. I think I have it in the correct. Oh, <gasps> well, good! It stuck to the cotton swab. <laughs> Accidentally just launched the chip. This is the hard part about this chip. Now it's all fluxy. I gotta clean up. again. As you can see it's still stuck to the cotton swab. Ooh, but I can almost read it just with my bare eyeballs without looking through the scope. Ugh. Now the dots in the bottom left. Yep. One more rotation. was awful. I mean, I think it's still in position, but... Oh, there it goes. And you can see it's basically already soldered. Alright. Pull that off there. And we're done with the hot plate. I'm going to go ahead and unplug that. Set it aside so I don't burn myself on it again. I'm still doing some small soldering though, so let me remove that under there so we can focus on that. Clean off my tweezers again. So, flux is good, yes, but can't really see what's going on with this much flux. So I'm going to try cleaning most of it off. Good check to see that the chip is soldered down properly too, because you can double check the orientation of the chip against the board. see the dots line up, which is all I need. Dot on the chip, dot on the board. Cool. So next step, let me refocus that. We need to add two more capacitors. Once that chip's down, that's the hard part. 
get some caps off here. It is nothing special. These are do, 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 do. one UF 6.3 volt 0603 caps. There's even a part number for you. Just need two of them. But since I've got two boards here, I got four. Side ten. Come in here, drop the part down. Come on. Pick it around. Ooh. Sticky board, sticky tweezers. And come in here and you can do the other side. Easy peasy. And I like to come back and do the first side again. Ta-da! Nope, that was entirely out of frame. My apologies, the frame is so tiny. And we'll do the other one. Easy peasy. Get the flex one in here too. If I can get it picked up. Last one. Oops, I forgot to tin it. Oops, I messed that up. And somehow I salvaged that. Cool, cool, cool.
That is doing nothing to clean that thing up. Let's get that. Okay. So now we need to check something because in my infinite wisdom when I made these prototype boards, I neglected to label the board. Uh, now, it's not all bad because uh, I'm the one who made the board so I could just check the board file. But the problem is these things are uh, so hard to so hard to really see. So I'm relying on is that even the dot? I can't tell. Oh no, that wasn't even the dot. Um I think this one came unsoldered, but that's probably fine. I can fix it later. My concern is there's that random solder ball right under the chip. Let's, let's investigate. Yeah, I'll have to clean that out to see what's going on. Look on this side. See, it looks crooked. That don't look good. With how cheap these things are, it's probably easier to just factor that into the budget. If you mess up soldering one, uh, just throw the chip out because they come with the balls already on them. I will come back to that one later. Look at the other one. Alright, so what I was looking at on the other one. See, this one looks nice and flat, parallel with the board. I don't think we're going to have an issue with that. Sorry, it's hard to get the lighting right on these. Anyway, let's get that out of here. We get another cotton swab so we can orient this thing. Just trying to be careful near the chip. I don't want to get cotton swab stuck in it. And yet, that's exactly what it did. Oh well. At least I can see the chip now. All right. So we will orient that to put the dot on the top left, which if for some reason you have the exact same version boards I do, that would put the via on the bottom right. There's only one via on these things. Uh, but with the dot on the top left, we have VCC battery positive, bottom left is ground, and bottom right is common. I'm going to set this aside and we're going to switch back to the overhead here. This thing charge. All right. So now we're going to see if I can improve upon this problem without cleaning the power switch. All right, I need my screwdrivers. I don't know why I put them away ahead of time. I think this one's all GIS. Yep, feels like it.
make sure your square nut doesn't fall out. And if it does, keep track of it because that's where it goes. All right. Set this thing aside. And we are not cleaning the power switch, but we do need to cut a trace. So if we look at the GBA SP board in particular, we see there are four pins for the power switch. You have one, C2, C1, and two. The C2 and one pins internally inside the switch, those are connected. And if you look at the board, you could see it's connected here as well. So we can treat this as three pins, one, two, three, or one, two, and C, as it were. Um, but what we need to do is we need to separate right here. We need to cut into the PCB because I need to be able to separate the C pins from the Game Boy itself. How the switch is wired is one right here goes to ground. The common pins are the power input for the Game Boy and then pin two is the power input from the battery. So when you switch it from, when you switch it to off, one and C are connected, which means it's grounding out the power rail, which should drain all the capacitors and basically help it stay safe while it's shut down. Whereas when you switch it on, we have the common pins shorted to pin two, which is the battery input to the power input in the Game Boy. Switch it off, blah, blah, blah. So we can retain the ground input and then the battery input. We don't have to modify those whatsoever, but we will have to um, wire in parallel, as it were. Uh, but the common input, we need to be between the Game Boy and the Switch. Now, unfortunately, on this specific console, I'm going to have to pull this motherboard out just to get to um, a good place to solder on here. Oh, now we can just scrape up some of the trace. It's fine. It'll work out. We just need to be careful because I don't have that much to work with. I don't want to get in the way of the cart slot here. I want to be able to put this back together again. Which means basically everything needs to be well clear because we're going to jam it up in this empty space here. All right. Cut the trace. That's the tool I need. That's the tool I need. Clean that up a little bit. All right, so I am going to use this utility knife to cut the trace. Um, and then I will use my multimeter to double check that the trace is cut. So before I start cutting it, let me grab the multimeter. Because of course there's nothing more annoying than having to troubleshoot something that isn't working but should be. I have it in continuity mode so when the two probes touch, it beeps. I can see pin C2 is connected to C1. But I can also see the C pins, and then let me follow this thing verbally. It's connected to that. So I will check against this via all the way at the bottom right corner of this little QC stamp here. Check continuity with that. Cut this. Lock it. And we need total separation of the trace as close to the switch as possible. My preferred method, bring that in a little, is I'll cut two, I'll make two cuts, and then come in here with one of them and then just dig out the copper between the two. But I'm not sure I'm cut all the way through. We also have to be careful because this is a very thin PCB, and if we cut too far in, 
and cut into an internal layer. should do it. And now we have a nice big separation. Let's double check that with the multimeter. C1 and C2 are still connected, but C pins are no longer connected to this via. So, I have been successful. Cool, cool, cool. Let's put these away. Get the other scraper here. So we need to be able to solder I think it'd be real convenient if I could do it right here. Alright. Alright, so now I have two features there. I have the cut and then some bare copper. I'm going to tin the bare copper. I think I have enough exposed. I just want a little bit more, but I don't want to accidentally scrape off too much. That's good. I wasn't getting enough of a solder blob. I feel confident soldering a wire too. That's better. Cool, 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 cool. So now we got to wire this thing up, which means I need a few short wires. Three, four, rather. Hmm. I think I'll use this stuff. Now, I should use thicker stuff. We're going to put the whole Game Boy through that. I want to get a little bit thicker wire. A little thick, but I think we'll use some 28 gauge. And I think we should be fine. Ooh. I can stop throwing my strippers at me. Just realized I was out of frame this whole time. My bad. All right, I got four wires now, though.
Okay. So now we're going to solder in the other one that I prepared another time. Oh, I lied. I said there's only one via. There's two vias. There's just one stranded via up here. It's not stranded. It just looks like it. Anyway. Just to keep track of. And so we need ground battery pos battery positive. We will use pin two on the power switch as battery positive. Also solder to the common. Already got that tinned, and then we need ground. Which ground shall we use? Could just use that last. Bit. No, we gotta. We can't use that last pin. We gotta have a solid connection to ground. Cause I forgot the chip has its own internal drain resistor. So I am fairly confident. Is that ground? No, it's ground. Well, then that's a ground. Yeah, that would be convenient, wouldn't it? Okay. So I can use the left side of that resistor as ground. Or just the shield, the switch housing. I forgot that was grounded on this console. Okay. Enough daily daily. I should use tweezers for this. This is not working out too well, is it? I think I'm going about this all the wrong way. Solder this one first. left side of the resistor Switch is still going to be doing the switching. It's just not doing all the switching. We're going to have this thing wired so that the actual physical metal switch is telling the smart switch right here to actually turn the Game Boy on and off. start in the top left with that. Alright, and that top pad is going to be
VCC. Well, shoot, now I have it backwards and I can't remember how it's supposed to be wired. Okay, so, one moment. Okay. I've got it now. I just had to decipher my thoughts. VCC will be the Game Boy side power rail, which is what we're starting with. That one pad that I pinned. Tinned. Yeah, just hold this with your bare hands when you have tweezers. It'll be fine. Okay. So that one's VCC. Next we will do ground. There we go. It's ground. C. So next uh, one goes right here. C, of course, refers to the switch. Common pins. Whereas VCC is the other side with the switch switched. Last one, battery plus. Easy. And now, if everything went well, my Game Boy should just work. But we gotta put it back together. Alright. So I like the PCB version a little bit better because these vias are going to be stronger. Folding these under is going to probably break at least one of them. Or maybe not so much. Alright, well... Oh, no, one of them broke. Did it break as much as I think it did? Oh, no, it didn't break. I'm just going to curl this bad boy up. Let it live sideways right there. I think it should be fine. Should fit nicely. Should have put it in a slightly different spot. It still fits, I think. No. Ah. 
Ah, there we go. <laughs> there. Of course I'm going to put this thing all the way back together which is bad luck. But at least got to put the battery cover on. Hold the battery in. Now, I know you could make the argument, oh, well, he paused the video several times. Must have cleaned it off screen. Now, I mean, I didn't, but if you want to think that, so be it. But look at that. It's working. I mean, the concept is really simple. It's just we're using this switch to carry much less current. The current to activate the MOSFET in the switch I just installed, very minimal. Um, it requires a few microamps, whereas the Game Boy requires a few, you know, 70, 80 milliamps. It's quite a magnitude of difference. It's still the same voltage, so it should still be hitting the, the wetting current level of the actual switch itself. Uh, but it's moving much less current. So when the resistance changes, as I jiggle it a little, it's still passing enough current to tell the internal MOSFET to stay on. Now, eventually, the switch will actually switch off, which will tell the MOSFET to switch off and turn. And the MOSFET has an internal drain resistor, so it doesn't matter that we just bypass the one in the Game Boy itself. Um, it, it works surprisingly well. I wanted to get a second one installed. I'm still, um, I guess, demoing them, making sure they work the way I want them to before I share any board files or anything else. Um, and I, I put one in this Game Boy, and I really thought I'd use the Game Boy, but I still keep coming back to this thing. So now they both have one. Um but I still want to use it, make sure there's no weird gotchas with this thing that I'm not expecting. Uh, because, quite frankly, uh, I did have the one installed in the ITA Game Boy Advance, but I've been using that Game Boy to test some of the Game Boy Advance battery mods, and my mod discovered some weird behavior with some other kits. Um, now, I haven't played around with it enough to know whether that weird behavior was just like a one-off quirk, it's repeatable, what, you know, what. And quite frankly, I'm not too concerned even if it is, but I want to back that by installing that in a console that is meant for lithium ion. See if that see if that makes a difference. I don't think I'll encounter the same weird behavior, but it'll be very interesting to find out. Um so, yeah, I I'm I'm going to use it, and uh, we'll find out. I know it's working. All right, that's all I got. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, that ended up being quite a bit longer than I expected, but, well, I don't know. It's late, but I was in the creative mood, so I decided to share anyway. All right, catch you on next one.